In this video I'm going to go over the process of setting up Unreal 4 to use HDRI or lighting to render out a prop. So I'm going to start in the Blueprints tab, I'm going to click blank, and I'm going to say where I want to save my project. I'm going to name this Kopesh underscore UE4 because it's a Kopesh that I'm um, rendering out. I want it set to desktop console, maximal quality, and make sure this is set to no starter content. Then I'll click create project. As I do that, the project folder gets created where I told it to be created. And I now have a project open. So I'm going to click on this little icon here to get um, the outliner for the content open and where it says content here I'm going to select that I'm going to right click choose new folder and I'm going to call this static mesh and that's where I'll save my static mesh and then I'll right click new folder call this textures and that's where I'll save my textures right click again new folder materials and that's where I'll create my materials so with my static mesh folder open, I'm going to go to where I saved my mesh, which I have over here, my 2UE4 folder, this SM for static mesh underscore Kopesh. So I'm going to drag that in here. And my mesh uh, has unique UVs. There are no overlapping UVs. So I don't need um, UE4 to uh, create light map UVs. So I'm going to click on that little tab, so this little tab here, and I'm going to turn off generate light map UVs. If you have overlapping UVs on your mesh and you have not created your own light map UVs, then you'll probably want to keep that turned on. Then I'm going to scroll down under materials. I'm going to turn off import materials and import textures because I'm going to do that manually. And then I'll click import and my mesh has now been imported in here. Then I'll go to my textures tab and I'll go to where I save my textures and I will select my base color, metallic from roughness, ambient occlusion, and normal map and drag those into the scene. So you'll see that the normal map should get imported as a normal map. Uh, you want that to happen, so click OK there. And with your metallic roughness ambient occlusion, it is important to, at this point, double click on it to open up the um, editor. And for this, you want to, over here where it says texture and sRGB, turn that off. If this is turned on, the material is going to look super shiny and not correct. So you need to turn that off. Um, this texture looks pretty weird. It's because it is a pack texture with the metallic in the red channel, the roughness in the green channel, and the ambient occlusion in the blue channel. So each of those channels will be used separately. I'll click Save. Then I'm going to go to Materials and I'm going to right click in here and choose material and I'll call that M for material underscore Kopesh and double click on that and in my material editor here I will then click on textures my textures folder and I'll drag my base color from the texture folder into the material editor and this top output I'm going to click that and drag it and connect it to base color. So my base color has now been collect connected. Then I'll go to my metallic roughness ambient occlusion and with this I'm using the separate R, G, and B channels. So red I will drag to metallic, green I'll drag to roughness, and blue will go to ambient occlusion. And then I'll bring in my normal map. And this, again, like the base color, I want to use that top white output and connect it to normal. 
and that texture is now all set. And I'll click Save, and then Close. And now I can go to Static Mesh, double click on the mesh, come back here to my materials, select the material, and in the mesh editor over here where the texture is, with the material selected in the content browser, click on this arrow and that will now apply it to the mesh. And then click Save. So we now have our mesh with the um, correct material on it. And so I'm going to go to File, New Level, and I'm going to create an empty level. And then I'm going to go to this Engine Content folder, and if you don't see Engine Content, under here, under View Options, turn on this Show Engine Content. So you can see that with that off, I'm not seeing it. If I come back and turn it on, I am seeing it. So I want to grab a um, editor sky sphere from here. So I'm going to type in sky, and you'll see right here um, at the top there's this editor sky sphere. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that in. Then I'm going to, in the filter tab, get rid of sky. Then I am going to go back to my materials folder, right click, new material, and I'm going to call this M underscore sky sphere. And with this, I'm going to double click on it. And I want this to be an unlit material. So where it says shading model over here, I'm going to set that to unlit. And I just want it to be gray. So I'm going to grab a constant one and attach that to emissive. And I'm going to make it fairly dark, so maybe like 0.1. And I'll click Save. And then I'm going to select my editor sky sphere in the uh, world outliner. And you'll see that over here it says what materials on it. So I'm going to select that new material and apply it to it. And I now have um, this dark gray sphere in there. And I'm going to, still with the sky sphere selected where it says location, I'm going to change that to 000, zero, zero so it's centered in my scene. Then I'll go to Static Mesh folder and drag my Static Mesh in there, and again, set that to 000. zero, zero. And then I can zoom into it, or I can select it and hit F in order to focus in. And this looks pretty bad right now because we're currently in unlit mode. I don't have any lighting in here. Um, the only lighting is coming from, or the, the uh, Editor Sky Sphere has a bit of a missive on it. So, in order to create some lighting, we're going to use a skylight with an HDRI um, image on it. So, I'm going to go to Lights, and I'm going to create a skylight. And as soon as I do that, it's going to make my object black, um, but you'll notice um, that the scene brightened up. So it's black right now because the actual environment in here is uh, black or dark gray, and the skylight is does not have an HDRI image attached to it yet. So I'm going to go to my textures, and if you go to hdrihaven.com, you can get all kinds of free HDRI images. Um, you can give them a um, uh, you can you give them support uh, through Patreon and things like that. Um, I downloaded this Studio Small 2. So I'm going to drag that image into my textures. And then with my skylight selected, I'm going to change source type 
to SLS Specified Cube Map. I'll select my HDRI image and click the arrow next to Cube Map, and that now will add this Cube Map to my scene. This is uh, a bit too bright now, so I am going to use a post-process volume to control the overall lighting in the scene, or the overall brightness of the scene. So if I go to Visual Effects, Post-Process Volume, drag that in. Up here in Search Details, I'm going to type in UNB so that it uh, recognizes Unbound, and I'm going to turn that on. That will make it so this post-process volume will affect the entire scene. And um, then in the Search field, I'm going to type in EXP for Exposure and that will bring me to the lens exposure. I'm going to turn on min brightness and max brightness and I'm going to set a value for these so that they are the same value so that uh, it doesn't have that auto exposure where it uh, starts out a little dark and then gets brighter. Um, the It's a little bit counterintuitive because if I type in lower numbers it gets brighter. So the lower the number, the brighter it is, the higher the number, the darker it is. So I'm going to start with just that max, min-max brightness set to 1 so that uh, that scene, the, is, the background is fairly dark. And then this actually looks pretty good, but what I can do now is go to my skylight Make sure that I don't have anything typed in the search details. And if I think the lighting is a little too bright, I can adjust that intensity. So see if I turn down the intensity, it gets darker. That's a little too dark. Maybe. So maybe something like that. All right, so something like that. So you need to play around with that intensity to get it uh, looking the way you want. And depending on the HDRI image that you use, it's going to have a different effect on the lighting. So if I drag in another HDRI image, I'll choose, uh, let's see, this Greenpoint Park. And I select that and put that on there, you can see that it changed the overall lighting effect. So for this object, since it's just a, a prop, I kind of like just the basic studio lighting. Um, it gives it nice lighting all the way around and that kind of thing. All right, so that is the basics of setting up the scene with some HDR lighting. Uh, in the next video, I'll go over creating a high-resolution screenshot.